Alright guys, welcome to a new video. In today's analysis, I'm gonna focus on the game between the Netherlands and Germany. Let's see what happened in this classic clash of European football. So how exactly did they line up? The Dutch side lined up in some sort of 4-3-3. Memphis Depay was the striker of the team, and we are gonna detail the collective animation in the course of the video. Germany lined up in a 3-4-1-2 formation. What's interesting here is that Joachim Löw chose two wingers to play as forwards, Sané and Gnabry. The Germans started the game with 55% possession during the 31st minute. Germany would build with three men at the back. Schultz was like a third centre-back on this specific action. The Dutch tried pressing high on the short build-up. As you see, Wijnaldum and Durang were pressing on Kroos and Kimmich while De Jong would cover his zone a little bit deeper. A German forward would always drop in midfield, so it could create a 4v3 situation. Here, Gnabry is in the zone of De Jong. This meant numerical superiority, so with the midfielders high and the fullback to step out, there would always be a very interesting pass lane from the wing. As a consequence of the weak spot in midfield, centre-backs would be in difficult conditions, And this was Germany's first opportunity of the game. Here we see the same pattern in the build-up. Midfielders press on midfielders and Gnabry dropped in midfield, marked by De Jong. With another forward dropping in midfield, the Germans have numerical superiority and the pass lanes appear when the man on the ball is not pressured enough. Again, that forced the centre-backs to make very difficult compensations and it didn't always work. Another example with De Jong rushing to Margaretka and Depay is pressing too. Sani drops unmarked and Depay doesn't shot the pass lane. His pressing work was highly dubious all game long. Again we see the diagonal outside inner pass lane and no one shots it. The Dutch pressing could work only with high and tight 1v1 on the ball side. Manuel Neuer is forced long. Even centre backs came to mark the forwards. However, the Germans tended to win most of the second balls, so they kept control. Now, let's see what the Dutch did in possession. They built with the back three like the Germans, and Germany pressed with a 5-2-3 formation, very narrow and careful to block the central midfielders first. This forced them to play on the wing. Then Kara, the wing back, would step to shot the pass lane, leaving Bling with no option. Here again the same, Zanel narrow press from the front three and Kara to step on the time of the pass. A quick check to know the opponent's position. And then Bling cannot do anything on the ball. If we look at the bigger picture, the whole animation meant the 5-2-3 switch to a 4 3 through press when the ball was on the side. And on this action, Kara shorts the pass lane, but Kimmich goes to the wing and forgets about Wijnaldum. Therefore, a pass lane is open, Genta cannot make the correction well, this was one of the best build-up Haaland had in the first half. Because of the Germans' territorial domination, Holland would not build two dangerous actions. Germany would keep a 5-4-1 around their box, which is a very safe structure. The Dutch had two crossing momentums around minute 10 and minute 20 after set pieces or something like that for 14 crosses in the first half, while Germany had only four 
and those far post crosses were mostly inefficient. Yet, on one action, Carrier got distracted by a Dutch player's position off screen. That was a big chance. Furthermore, they managed to have another good chance after a more random action based on a long ball. Solid save from Neuer. Germany confirmed their superiority by scoring the first goal of the game. As we described already, there's a pass lane to the forward. Van Dijk has to step out and make the correction. But then the defensive line was all upside down. Sané can't get on the inside. Dillard has to close the space on the inside and Sané can take him off balance. Overall, the Germans took advantage of a mediocre lining in the Dutch defence. First example, no offside because the centre-back covers Sané. And as a consequence, Van Dijk has to make a correction. Again, no offside, which really puts the defence in trouble. And this persistent problem broke the second goal of the game. No offside because Van Dijk's covering. And the rest is just individual talent. Led, the Netherlands recovered 58% possession after the second goal, but they were in trouble getting past the German defence. And they didn't have one single shot from the 30th minute to the end of the first half. The Netherlands started well, and two minutes in the second half, they managed to score on a corner kick situation. Really a great header from De Ligt. Efficiency was back, first shot on target in the second half, first goal. Germany played much lower and kept their 5 4 1 system which is a very challenging formation to break. The Netherlands had 58% possession in the second half. They were playing in some sort of 3-3-1-3 system and Depay was on the wing. High and wide positioning in between each players was very important to pin the Germans high. And like that, Holland could have numerical equality on the wing. When there are favourable conditions, talent can be expressed. What's important here is the players' positions on the left-hand side of their opponents to pin them and create more space on the wing. And as you see, this creates a 3 against 3 on the side of the ball. The problem with German defence was that there were too many players deep when the ball was recovered to have a proper transition. Here, they can't do anything with the ball. Again, too many players deep. But the German coach probably didn't want transitions, but solid defending. Minute 63, new turning point. On some sort of transition, Holland find the equalizer. This was not great defending by the right back Kera. And after some mess inside the box, the vice scores. Second shot on target, second goal. Efficiency was defeating German's defense. After the second goal, they kept playing well with good penetration, but only a few chances. Inside their box, Germany had six tackles, 13 clearances and six blocks. That's quite a lot. The Netherlands had only three shots on target in the second half. Meanwhile, Germany didn't have one single attempt until the 80th minute. 
and then Marco Royce came in. At the 90th minute, on a seemingly harmless action, Germany scored. And this was very poor defending, given the numerical superiority the Dutch had through the whole action. Game over, the Germans win.